Unity is the great need of the hour. That's what Dr. King said. And it is the great need of this hour as well. Not because it sounds pleasant, not because it makes us feel good, but because it's the only way we can overcome the essential deficit that exists in this country. I'm not talking about the budget deficit. I'm not talking about the trade deficit. I'm talking about the moral deficit in this country. I'm talking about an empathy deficit, the inability to recognize ourselves in one another, to understand that we are our brother's keeper and our sister's keeper, that in the words of Dr. King, we are all tied together in a single garment of destiny. We have an empathy deficit when we're still sending our children down corridors of shame schools in the forgotten corners of America where the color of your skin still affects the content of your education. We have a deficit when CEOs are making more in 10 minutes than ordinary workers are making an entire year. When families lose their homes so unscrupulous lenders can make a profit. When mothers can't afford a doctor, when their children are stricken with illness. We have a deficit in this country when we have Scooter Libby justice for some and Gina justice for others. When our children see hanging nooses from a schoolyard tree today in the present in the 21st century. We have a deficit when homeless veterans sleep on the streets of our cities, when innocents are slaughtered in the deserts of Darfur, when young Americans serve tour after tour after tour after tour of duty in a war that should have never been authorized and should have never been waged. We have an empathy deficit in this country that has to be closed. It takes a terrible storm to reveal the hungry that God calls on us to feed, the sick that he calls on us to care for, the least of these that he commands that we treat as our own. So we have a deficit to close. We have walls, barriers to justice and equality that must come down. And to do this, we know that unity is the great need of the hour. However, all too often when we talk about unity in this country, we've come to believe that it can be purchased on the cheap. We've come to believe that racial reconciliation can come easily, that it's just a matter of a few ignorant people trapped in the prejudices of the past, and that if the demagogues and those who would exploit our racial divisions will simply go away, then all our problems will be solved. All too often, we seek to ignore the profound structural and institutional barriers that stand in the way of ensuring opportunity for all of our children, or decent jobs for all of our people, or health care for those who are sick. We long for unity, but we are not willing to pay the price that's required. But of course, true unity cannot be so easily purchased. It starts with a change in attitudes. It starts with changing our hearts and changing our minds, broadening our spirit. It's not easy to stand in somebody else's shoes. It's not easy to see past our own differences. We've all encountered this in our own lives. 
What makes it even more difficult is that we have a politics in this country that seeks to drive us apart, that puts up walls between us. We are told that those who differ from us on a few things differ from us on all things, that our problems are the fault of those who don't think like us or look like us or come from where we do. The welfare queen, she's taking our money. The immigrant, he's taking our jobs. The believer condemns the non-believer as immoral. And the non-believer chides the believer for being intolerant 